William Cooper's note, I read top secret documents which explain silent weapons for quiet wars is the doctrine adopted by the policy committee of the Bilderberg Group during its first known meeting in 1954. A copy found in 1969 was in the possession of naval intelligence. The following document, dated May 1979, was found on July 7, 1986, in an IBM copier that had been purchased at a surplus sale. May Day 1979, Top Secret. Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. An Introductory Programming Manual Operations Research. This publication marks the 25th anniversary of the Third World War, called the Quiet War being conducted using subjective biological warfare, fought with silent weapons. Silent weapons technology has evolved from operations research, a strategic and tactical methodology developed under the military management in England during World War II. The original purpose of operations research was to study the strategic and tactical problems of air and land defense with the objective of effective use of limited military resources against foreign enemies. It was soon recognized by those in positions of power, CFR, that the same methods might be useful for totally controlling a society. But better tools were necessary. Social engineering, the analysis and automation of a society requires the correlation of great amounts of constantly changing economic information, data, so a high-speed computerized data processing system was necessary which could race ahead of the society and predict when society would arrive for capitulation. Relay computers were too slow, but the electronic computer, invented in 1946 by Prosper Eckert and John Mackey, filled the bill. The next breakthrough was the development of the simplex method of linear programming in 1947 by the mathematician George B. Dantzig. Then in 1948, the transistor, invented by Bardeen, Brittain, and Shockley, promised great expansion of the computer field by reducing space and power requirements. With these three inventors under their direction, those in position of power strongly suspected that it was possible for them to control the whole world with the push of a button. Immediately, the Rockefeller Foundation got in on the ground floor by making a four-year grant Harvard College, funding the Harvard Economic Research Project for the study of the structure of the American economy. One year later, in 1949, the United States Air Force joined in. In 1952 original grand period terminated and a high-level meeting of the elite was held to determine the next phase of social operations research. The Harvard project had been very fruitful, as is borne out by the publication of the sum of its results in 1953 suggesting the feasibility of economic, social, engineering, studies in the structure of the American economy, copyright 1953 by Vasilio Leon de Eve, International Sciences Press Incorporated, White Plains. New York. Dot, the Quiet War was quietly declared by the international elite, the Bilderberg Group, at a meeting held in 1954. Although the silent weapon system was nearly exposed 13 years later, the evolution of the new weapon system has never suffered any major setbacks. Dot, all science is merely a means to an end. The means is knowledge. The end is control. Beyond this remains only one issue, who will be the beneficiary. In 1954 this was the issue of primary concern. Although the so-called moral issues were raised, in view of the law of natural selection it was agreed that a nation or world of people who will not use their intelligence are no better than animals who do not have intelligence. Such people are beasts of burden and stakes on the table by choice and consent. Dot. In order to achieve a totally predictable economy, the low-class elements of the society must be brought under total control, that is, must be housebroken, and assigned a yoke and long-term social duties from a very early age, before they have an opportunity to question the proprietary of the matter. In order to achieve such conformity, the lower-class family unit must be disintegrated by a process of increasing preoccupation of the parents and the establishment of government-operated daycare centers for the occupationally orphaned children. 
The quality of education given to the lower class must be of the poorest sort, so that the mode of ignorance isolating the inferior class from superior class is and remains incomprehensible to the inferior class. This form of slavery is essential to maintaining some measure of social order, peace, and tranquility for the ruling upper class. Descriptive Introduction of the Silent Weapon, It Shots Situations, Instead of Bullets, Propelled by Data Processing, Instead of a Chemical Reaction, Originating from Bits of Data, Instead of Grains of Gunpowder, From a Computer, Instead of a Gun, Operated by a Computer Programmer, Instead of a Marksman, Under the Orders of a Banking Magnate, Instead of a Military General. It Makes No Obvious Explosive Noises causes no obvious physical or mental injuries, and doesn't obviously interfere with anyone's daily social life. Yet it makes an unmistakable noise, causes unmistakable physical and mental damage, and unmistakably interferes with daily social life, that is, unmistakable to a trained observer, one who knows what to look for. The public cannot comprehend this weapon, and therefore cannot believe that they are being attacked and subdued by a weapon. The public might instinctively feel that something is wrong, but because of the technical nature of the silent weapon, they cannot express their feelings in a rational way, or handle the problem with intelligence. Therefore, they don't know how to cry for help, and do not know how to associate with others to defend themselves against it. When a silent weapon is applied gradually, the public adjust adapts to its presence and learns to tolerate its encroachment on their lives until the pressure becomes too great and they cracked up. Therefore, the silent weapon is a type of biological warfare. It attacks the vitality, options, and mobility of the individuals of a society by knowing, understanding, manipulating, and attacking their sources of natural and social energy, and their physical, mental, and emotional strengths and weaknesses. Meyer M. Schoolrothschild, 1743-1812, Give me control over nation's currency, and I care not who makes its laws. Today's silent weapons technology is an outgrowth of a simple idea discovered, succinctly expressed, and effectively applied by the quoted Mr. Meyer M. Schoolrothschild. He discovered the missing passive component of economic theory known as economic inductance. He of course, did not think of his discovery in these 20th century terms, and, to be sure, mathematical analysis had to wait for the second industrial revolution, the rise of the theory of mechanics and electronics, and finally, the invention of the electronic computer before it could be effectively applied in the control of the world economy. Dot, in economics three concepts are associated with, 1, economic capacitance, capital, money stock, inventory, investments in buildings and durables, etc., 2, economic conductance, goods, production flow coefficients, 3, economic inductance, services, the influence of the population of industry on output. All of the mathematical theory developed in the study of the one energy system, for example, mechanics, electronics, etc., can be immediately applied in the study of any other energy system, for example, economics. What Mr. Rothschild had discovered was the basic principle of power, influence, and control over the people as applied to economics. That principle is when you assume the appearance of power, people soon give it to you. Mr. Rothschild had discovered that currency or deposit loan accounts had the required appearance of power that could be used to induce people into surrendering their real wealth in exchange for a promise of greater wealth. They put up real collateral in exchange for a loan of promissory notes. Mr. Rothschild found that he could issue more notes than he had backing for, so long as he had someone's stock of gold as persuader to show to his customers. Mr. Rothschild loaned his promissory note to individuals and to governments. These would create overconfidence. Then he would make money scare, tighten control of the system, and collect the collateral through the obligation of contractors. The cycle was then repeated. These pressures could be used to initiate a war. Then he would control the availability of currency to determine who would win the war. 
that government which agreed to give him control of its economic system got his support. Collection of debts was guaranteed by economic aid to the enemy of the debtor. The profit derived from this economic methodology made Mr. Rothschild all the more able to extend his wealth. He found that the public greed would allow currency to be printed by government order beyond the limits, inflation, of backing in previous metal or the production of goods and services. GMP. In this structure, credit, presented as a pure element called currency, has the appearance of capital, but is, in fact, indebtedness of debt. It is therefore an economic inductance instead of an economic capacitance, and if balanced in no other way will be balanced by the negation of population, war, genocide. The total goods and services represent real capital called the gross national product and currency may be printed up to this level and still represent economic capacitance, but currency printed beyond this level is subtractive, represents the induction of economic inductance, and constitutes notes of indebtedness. War is therefore the balancing of the system by killing the true creditors, the public which we have taught to exchange true value for inflated currency, and falling back on whatever is left of the resources of nature and regeneration of those resources. Mr. Rothschild had discovered that currency gave him the power to rearrange the economic structure to his own advantage, to shift economic inductance to those economic positions which would encourage the greatest economic instability and oscillation. The final key to economic control had to wait until there was sufficient data and high-speed computer equipment to keep close watch on the economic oscillations created by price shocking and excess paper energy credits, paper inductance, inflation. The aviation field provided the greatest evolution in economic engineering by way of the mathematical theory of shock testing. In this process, a project Ellis fired an airframe on the ground and the impulse of the recoil is monitored by vibration transducers connected to the airframe and wired to chart recorders. By studying the echoes or reflections of the recoil T-pulse in the airframe, it is possible to discover critical vibrations in the structure of the airframe which either vibrations of the engine or aeolian vibrations of the wings, or a combination of the two might reinforce resulting in a resonant self-destruction of the airframe in flight as an aircraft. From the standpoint of engineering, this means that the strength and weakness of the structure of the airframe in terms of vibrational energy can be discovered and manipulated. To use this method of airframe shock testing in economic engineering, the prices of commodities are shocked, and the public consumer reaction is monitored. The resulting echoes of the economic shock are interpreted theoretically by computers and the psychoeconomic structure of the economy is thus discovered. It is by this process that partial differential and difference matrices are discovered that define the family household and make possible its evaluation as an economic industry, dissipative consumer structure. Then the response of the household to future shocks can be predicted and manipulated and society becomes a well-regulated animal with its reins under the control of a sophisticated computer-regulated social energy bookkeeping system. Eventually every individual element of the structure comes under computer control through a knowledge of personal preferences, such knowledge guaranteed by Computer Association of Consumer Preferences, Universal Product Code, UPC, Zebra Stripe Pricing Codes on Packages with identified consumers, identified via association with the use of a credit card. The Harvard Economic Research Project, 1948, was an extension of World War II operations research. Its purpose was to discover the science of controlling an economy, at first the American economy, and then the world economy. It was felt that with sufficient mathematical foundation and data, it would be nearly as easy to predict and control the trend of an economy as to predict and control the trajectory of a projectile. Dot, the immediate aim of the Harvard was to discover the economic structure, what forces change that structure, how the behavior of the structure can be predicted, and how it can be manipulated. What was needed was a well-organized knowledge of the mathematical structures and interrelationships of investment, production, distribution, and consumption. Dot. 
it was discovered that an economy obeyed the same laws as electricity and that all of the mathematical theory and practical and computer know-how developed for the electronic field could be directly applied in the study of economics. This discovery was not openly declared, and its more subtle implications were and kept a closely guarded secret, for example that in an economic model, human life is measured in dollars and that the electric spark generated when opening a switch connected to an active inductor is mathematically analogous to the initiation of a war. The greatest hurdle which theoretical economists faced was the accurate description of the household as an industry. This is a challenge because consumer purchases are a matter of choice which in turn is influenced by income, price, and other economic factors. This hurdle was cleared in an indirect and statistically approximate way by an application of shock testing to determine the current characteristics, called current technical coefficients, or household industry. Finally, because problems in theoretical economics can be translated very easily into problems in theoretical electronics, and the solution translated back again, it follows that only a book of language translation and concept definition needed to be written for economics. Dot. Three industrial classes, industries fall into three categories or classes, 1. Capital, resources, a. Nature, sources of energy and raw materials, b. Government, printing of currency equal to gross national product, GNP, and extension, inflation of currency in excess of GNP, c, banking, loaning money for interest, and extension, inflation slash counterfeiting, of economic value through deposit loan accounts, 2, goods, commodities or use, dissipative, exist as producers of tangible or consumer, dissipated, products. This sort of activity is usually recognized and labeled by the public as an industry, 3, services action of population, are those which have service rather than a tangible product as their output. These industries are called, 1, households, and, 2, governments. Their output is human activity of a mechanical sort, and their basis is population. The whole economic system can be represented by a three-industry model if one allows the names of the outputs to be, 1, capital, 2, goods, and, 3, services. The problem with this representation is that it would not show the influence of, say, the textile industry and the ferrous metal industry would be contained within a single classification called the goods industry and by this process of combining or aggregating these two industries under one system block they would lose their economic individuality. A national economy consists of simultaneous flows of production, distribution, consumption, and investment. If all of these elements including labor and human functions are assigned a numerical value in like units of measure, say, $1939, then this flow can be further represented by a current flow in an electronic circuit, and its behavior can be predicted and manipulated with useful precision. All three ideal passive energy components of electronics, the capacitor, the resistor, and the inductor correspond to the three ideal passive energy components of economics called pure industries of capital, goods, and services, respectively. Economic capacitance represents the storage of capital in one form or another. Economic conductance represents the level of conductance of materials for the production of goods. Economic inductance represents the inertia of economic value in motion. This is a population phenomenon known as service. Economic inductance, an electrical inductor has an electric current as its primary phenomenon and a magnetic field as its secondary phenomenon. Corresponding to this, an economic inductor has a flow of economic value as its primary phenomenon and a population field as its secondary phenomenon of inertia. When the flow of economic value, for example, money, diminishes, the human population field collapses in order to keep the economic value, money, flowing, extreme case, war. This public inertia is a result of consumer buying habits, expected standard of living, etc., and is generally a phenomenon of self-preservation. Inductive factors to consider, 1, population, 
2. Magnitude of the economic activities of the government, 3. The method of financing these government activities. Time flow relationships and self destructive oscillations. An ideal industry may be symbolized electronically in various ways. The simplest way is to represent a demand by a voltage and a supply by a current. When this is done, the relationship between the two becomes what is called an admittance, which can result from three economic factors 1. Hindsight flow, 2. Present flow, 3. Foresight flow. Foresight flow is the result of that property of living entities to cause energy to be stored for a period of low energy. It consists of demands made upon economic system for that period of low energy. In a production industry it takes several forms, one of which is known as production stock or inventory. In electronic symbology this specific industry demand is represented by capacitance and the stock or resource is represented by a stored charge. Satisfaction of an industry demand suffers a lag because of the loading effect of inventory priorities. Present flow ideally involves no delay. It is, so to speak, input today for output today, a hand-to-mouth flow. In electronic symbology, this specific industry demand is represented by a conductance which is then a simple economic valve. Hindsight flow is known as habit or inertia. In electronics this phenomenon is the characteristic of an inductor, economic analog a pure service industry, in which a current flow, economic analog a flow of money, creates a magnetic field, economic analog a active human population, which, if the current, money flow, begins to diminish, collapse, war, to maintain the current, flow of money, energy. Other large alternatives to war as economic indicators or economic flywheels are an open-ended social welfare program, or an enormous open-ended space program. The problem with stabilizing the economic system is that there is too much demand on account of, 1, too much greed and, 2, too much population. This creates excessive economic inductance which can only be balanced with economic capacitance, true resources or value for example, in goods or services. The social welfare program is nothing more than an open-ended credit balance system which creates a false capital industry to give non-productive people a roof over their heads and food in their stomachs. This can be useful, however, because the recipients become state property in return for the gift, a standing army for the elite. For he who pays the piper picks the tune. Those who get hooked on the economic drug must go to the elite for a fix. In this, the method of introducing large amounts of stabilizing capacitance is by borrowing on the future credit of the world. This is a fourth law of motion, onset, and consists of performing an action and leaving the system before the reflected reaction returns to the point of action, a delayed reaction. This means of surviving the reaction is by changing the system before the reaction can return. By this means, politicians become popular in their own time and the public pays for it later. In fact, the measure of such a politician is the delay time. The same thing is achieved by a government by printing money beyond the limit of the gross national product, an economic process called inflation. Remember that inflation is only the act of printing money in excess of gross national product. They could blame it on the price of widgets or oil only because you never knew the real cause. The real cause and the only cause of inflation is the printing of more money beyond the GNP, this puts a large quantity of money into the hands of the public and maintains a balance against their greed, creates a false self-confidence in them and, for a while, stays the wolf from the door. They must eventually resort to war to balance the account because war ultimately is merely the act of destroying the creditor, and politicians are the publicly hired hitmen that justify the act to keep the responsibility and blood off the public conscience. If the people really cared about their fellow man, they would control their appetites, greed, procreation, etc., so that they would not have to operate on a credit welfare social system which steals from the worker to satisfy the bum. Since most of the general public will not exercise restraint, there are two alternatives to reduce the economic inductance of the system. 1. 
let the populace bludgeon each other to death in war, which will only result in a total destruction of the living earth. 2. Take control of the world by the use of economic silent weapons in a form of quiet warfare and reduce the economic conductance of the world to a safe level by a process of benevolent slavery and genocide. The latter option has been taken as the obviously better option. At this point it should be crystal clear to the reader why absolute secrecy about the silent weapons is necessary. The general public refuses to improve its own mentality and its faith in its fellow man. It has become a heart of proliferating barbarians, and, so to speak, a blight upon the face of the earth. They do not care enough about science to learn why they have not been able to avoid war despite religious morality, and their religious or self-gratifying refusal to deal with earthly problems renders the solution of the earthly problem unreachable by them. It is left to those few who are truly willing to think and survive as the fittest to survive, to solve the problem for themselves as the few who really care. Otherwise, exposure of the silent weapon would destroy our only hope of preserving the seed of future true humanity. The Household Industry Household Models the problem which a theoretical economist faces is that the consumer performances of any household is not easily predictable and the technical coefficients of any one household tend to be a nonlinear, very complex, and variable function of income, prices, etc. Computer information derived from the use of the universal product code in conjunction with credit card purchase as an individual household identifier could change this state of affairs but the UPC method is not yet available on a national or even a significant regional scale. To compensate for this data deficiency, an alternate indirect approach of analysis has been adopted known as economic shock testing. This method, widely used in the aircraft manufacturing industry, develops an aggregate statistical sort of data. Applied to economics this means that all of the households in the one region or in the whole nation are studied as a group or class rather than individually, and the mass behavior rather than individual behavior is used to discover useful estimates of the technical coefficients governing the economic structure of the hypothetical single household industry. One method of evaluating the technical coefficients of the household industry depends upon shocking the prices of a commodity and noting the changes in the sales of all the commodities. Economic shock testing, in recent times, the application of operations research to the study of the public economy has been obvious for anyone who understands the principles of shock testing. In the shock testing of an aircraft airframe, the recoil T-pulse of firing a gun mounted on that airframe causes shock waves in that structure which tell aviation engineers the conditions under which parts of the airplane or the whole airplane or its wings will start to vibrate or flutter like a guitar string, a flute reed, or a tuning fork, and disintegrate a fall apart in flight. Economic engineers achieve the same result in studying the behavior of the economy and the consumer public by carefully selecting a staple commodity such as beef, coffee, gasoline, or sugar, and then causing a sudden change or shock in its price or availability, thus kicking everybody's budget and buying habits out of shape. They then observe the shock waves which result by monitoring the changes in advertising, prices, and sales of that and other commodities. The objective of such studies is to acquire the know-how to set the public economy into a predictable state of motion or change, even a controlled self-destructive state of motion which will convince the public that certain expert people should take control of the money system and re-establish security for all. When the subject citizens are rendered unable to control their financial affairs, they, of course, become totally enslaved, a source of cheap labor. Not only the prices of commodities, but also the availability of labor can be used as the means of shock testing. Labor strikes deliver excellent tales shocks to an economy, especially in the critical service areas of trucking, transportation, communication, public utilities, energy, water, garbage collection, etc. By shock testing, 
It is found that there is a direct relationship between the availability of money flowing in an economy and the psychological outlook and response of masses of people dependent upon the availability. For example, there is a measure quantitative relationship between the price of gasoline and the probability that a person would experience a headache, feel a need to watch a violent movie, smoke a cigarette, or go to tavern for a mug of beer. It is the most interesting that, by observing and measuring the economic modes by which the public tries to run from their problems and escape from reality, and by applying the mathematical theory of operations research, it is possible to program computers to predict the most probable combination of created events, shocks, which will bring about a complete control and subjugation of the public through a subversion of the public economy. Introduction to Economic Amplifiers Economic amplifiers are the active components of economic engineering. The basic characteristic of any amplifier, mechanical, electrical, or economic, is that it receives an input control signal and delivers energy from an independent energy source to a specified output terminal in a predictable relationship to that input control signal. The simplest form of economic amplifier is a device called advertising. If a person is spoken to by a TV advertiser as if he were a 12-year-old, then, due to suggestibility, he will, with a certain probability, respond or react to that suggestion with the uncritical response of a 12-year-old and will reach into his economic reservoir and deliver its energy to buy that product on impulse when he passes it in the store. An economic amplifier may have several inputs and outputs. Its response might be instantaneous or delayed. Its circuit symbol might be a rotary switch if its options are exclusive, qualitative, go or no go, or it might have its parametric input, output relationships specified by matrix with internal energy sources represented. Whatever its sources might be, its purpose is to govern the flow of energy from a source to an output sink in direct relationship to an input control signal. For this reason, it is called an active circuit element or component. Economic amplifiers fall into classes called strategies, and, in comparison with electronic amplifiers, the specific internal functions of an economic amplifier are called logistical instead electrical. Therefore amplifiers not only deliver power gain but also, in effect, are used to cause changes in the economic circuitry. In the design of an economic amplifier we must have some idea of at least five functions, which are, 1, the available input signals, 2, the desired output control objectives, 3, the strategic objective, 4, the available economic power sources, 5, the logistical options. The process of defining and evaluating these factors and incorporating the economic amplifier into an economic system has been popularly called game theory. The design of an economic amplifier begins with a specification of the power level of the output, which can range from personal to national. The second condition is accuracy of response, that is, how accurately the output action is a function of the input commands. High gain combined with string feedback helps to deliver the required precision. Most of the error will be in the input data signal. Personal input data tends to be specific, while national input data tends to be statistical. Short list of inputs. Questions to be answered, what, when, where, how, why, who. General source of information, telephone taps, surveillance, analysis of garbage. Behavior of children in school. Standard of living by, food, clothing, shelter, transportation. Social contacts, telephone, itemized record of calls, family, marriage certificates, birth certificates, etc., memberships in organizations, political affiliation. The personal paper trail, checking accounts, credit card purchases, tagged credit card purchases the credit card purchase of products bearing the UPC Universal Product Code. Assets, checking accounts, saving accounts, real estate, business, automobile, safety deposit at bank, stock market. Liabilities, editors, enemies, loans, consumer credit. Government sources, ploys. Principle of ploy, 
the citizen will almost always make the collection of information easy if he can operate in the free sandwich principle of eat now, and pay later, welfare, social security, USDA surplus food, doles, grants, subsidies. Government sources, via intimidation, internal revenue service, OSHA, census, etc. Other government sources, surveillance of U.S. mail. Habit patterns, activities, sports, hobbies, see legal, fear, anger, etc. Crime record, hospital records, drug sensitive, reaction to pain etc. Psychiatric records, fears, angers, disgusts, adaptability, reactions to stimuli, violence, suggestibility or hypnosis, pain, pleasure, love, and sex. Models of coping, of adaptability, behavior, consumption of alcohol, consumption of drugs, entertainment, religious factors influencing behavior, other methods of escaping from reality. Payment modus operandi pay on time, etc., payment of telephone bills, energy purchase, electric, gas, water purchases, repayment of loans slash house payments, automobile payments, payments on credit cards. Political sensitivity, beliefs, contacts, position, projects, activities, strengths, weaknesses. Legal inputs, behavior control, excuses for investigation, search, arrest or employment of force to modify behavior, court records, police records, driving record, reports made to police, insurance information, anti-establishment acquaintances. National input information. Business sources, prices of commodities, sales, investments in, stocks, inventory, production tools and machinery, buildings and improvements, the stock market. Banks and credit bureaus credit information, payment information, miscellaneous sources, polls and surveys, publications, telephone records, energy and utility purchases. Short list of outputs, outputs, create controlled situations, manipulation of the economy, hence society, control by control of comprehension and income, sequence, allocates opportunities, destroys opportunities, controls the economic environment controls the availability of raw materials, controls capital, control bank rates, controls the inflation of the currency, controls the possession of property, controls industrial capacity, controls manufacturing, controls the availability of goods, commodities, controls the prices of commodities, controls services, the labor force, etc., controls payments to government officials, controls the legal functions, Controls the personal data files, uncorrectable by the party slandered, controls advertising, controls media contact, controls material available for TV viewing, disengages attention from real issues, engages emotions, creates disorder, chaos, and insanity, controls design of more probing tax forms, controls surveillance, controls the storage of information. Develops psychological analyzes and profiles of individuals, controls legal functions, controls sociological factors, controls health options, preys on weakness, cripples strengths, leeches wealth and substance. Table of strategies, do this to get this. Keep the public ignorant, less public organization. Maintain access to control points for feedback, required reaction to outputs, prices sales. Create preoccupation, lower defenses. Attack the family unit, control of the education of the young. Give less cash and more credit and doles, more self-indulgence and more data. Attack the privacy of the church, destroy faith in this sort of government. Social conformity, computer programming simplicity. Minimize the tax protest, maximum economic data. Minimum enforcement problems. Tighten control of variables, simpler computer input data, greater predictability. Establish boundary conditions, problem simplicity, solutions of differential and difference equations. Proper timing, less data shift and blurring. Maximize control, minimum resistance to control. Collapse of currency, 
destroy the faith of the American people in each other. Diversion, the primary strategy, experience has proven, that the simplest method of securing a silent weapon and gaining control of the public is to keep the public undisciplined and ignorant of a basic system principles on the one hand, while keeping them confused, disorganized and distracted with matters of no real importance on the other hand. This is achieved by, 1, disengaging their minds, sabotaging their material activities, providing a low-quality program of public education in mathematics, logic, systems design and economics, and discouraging technical creativity, 2, engaging their emotions, increasing their self-indulgence and their indulgence in emotional and physical activities, by, a, unrelenting emotional affrontations and attacks, mental and emotional rape, by way of a constant barrage of seconds, violence, and wars in the media, especially the TV and newspapers, b, giving them what they desire, in excess, junk food for thought, and depriving them of what they really need. 3. Rewriting history and law and subjecting the public to deviant creation, thus being able to shift their thinking from personal needs to highly fabricated outside priorities. These preclude their interest in and discovery of the silent weapons of social automation technology. The general rule is that there is profit in confusion, the more confusion, the more profit. Therefore, the best approach is to create problems and then offer the solutions. Discovery Summary, Media, Keep the Adult Public Attention Diverted Away from the Real Social Issues, and Captivated by Matters of No Real Importance. Schools, Keep the Young Public Ignorant of Real Mathematics, Real Economics, Real Law, and Real History. Entertainment, Keep the Public Entertainment Below a Sixth Grade Level. Work. Keep the public busy, 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 with no time to think, back on the farm with the other animals. Consent, the primary victory, a silent weapon system operates upon data obtained from a docile public by legal, but not always lawful, force. Much information is made available to silent weapon systems programmers through the Internal Revenue Service, IRS. This information consists of the enforced delivery of well-organized data contained in federal and state tax forms collected, assembled, and submitted by slave labor provided by taxpayers and employers. Furthermore, the number of such forms submitted to the IRS is a useful indicator of the public consent, an important factor in strategic decision-making. Other data sources are given in the short list of inputs. Consent Coefficients numerical feedback indicating victory status. Psychological basis, when the government is able to collect tax and seize private property without just compensation, it is an indication that the public is ripe for surrender and is consenting to enslavement to legal encroachment. A good and easily quantified indicator of harvest time is the number of public citizens who pay income tax despite an obvious lack of reciprocal or honest service from the government. Amplification energy sources, the next step in the process of designing an economic amplifier is discovering the energy sources. The energy sources which support any primitive economic system are, of course, a supply of raw materials, and the consent of the people to labor and consequently assume a certain rank, position, level, or class in the social structure, that is, to provide labor at various levels in the peaking order. Each class in guaranteeing its own level of income, controls the class immediately below it, hence preserves the class structure. This provides stability and security, but also government from the top. As time goes on and communication and education improve, the lower class elements of the social labor structure become knowledgeable and envious of the good things that the upper class members have. They also begin to attain a knowledge of energy systems and the ability to enforce their rise through the class structure. This threatens the sovereignty of the elite. If this rise of the lower classes can be postponed long enough, the elite can achieve energy dominance, and labor by consent no longer will hold a position of an essential economic energy source. Until such energy dominance is absolutely established the consent of people to labor and let others handle their affairs must be taken into consideration.
since failure to do so could cause the people to interfere in the final transfer of energy sources to the control of the elite. It is essential to recognize that at this time, public consent is still an essential key to release of energy in the process of economic amplification. Therefore, consent as an energy release mechanism will now be considered. Logistics, the successful application of a strategy requires a careful study of inputs, outputs, the strategy connecting the inputs and outputs, and the available energy sources to fuel the strategy. This study is called logistics. A logistical problem is studied at the elementary level first, and then levels of greater complexity are studied as a synthesis of elementary factors. This means that a given system is analyzed, that is, broken down into its subsystems, and these in turn are analyzed, until, by this process, one arrives at the logistical atom, the individual. This is where the process of synthesis properly begins, and at the time of the birth of the individual. The artificial womb, from the time a person leaves its mother's womb, its every effort is directed toward building, maintaining, and withdrawing into artificial wombs, various sorts of substitute protective devices or shells. The objective of those artificial wombs is to provide a stable environment for both stable and unstable activity, to provide a shelter for the evolutionary process of growth and maturity, that is, survival, to provide security for freedom and to provide defensive protection for offensive activity. This is equally truth of both the general public and the elite. However, there is a definite difference in the way each of these classes go about the solution of problems. The political structure of a nation dependency, the primary reason why the individual citizens of a country create a political structure is a subconscious wish or desire to perpetuate their own dependency relationship of childhood. Simply put, they want a human god to eliminate all risk from their life, pat them on the head, kiss their bruises, put a chicken on every dinner table, clothe their bodies, tuck them into bed at night and tell them that everything will be alright when they wake up in the morning. This public demand is incredible, so the human god, the politician, meet incredibility with incredibility by promising the world and delivering nothing. So who is the bigger liar? The public? Or the godfather? This public behavior is surrender born to fear, laziness, and expediency. It is the basis of the welfare state as a strategic weapon useful against a disgusting public. Action slash offense. Most people want to be able to subdue and or kill other human beings which disturb their daily lives, but they do not want to have to cope with the moral and religious issues which such an overt act on their part might raise. Therefore, they assign the dirty work to others, including their own children, so as to keep the blood off their own hands. They rave about humane treatment of animals and then shit down to a delicious hamburger from a whitewashed slaughterhouse down the street and out of sight. But even more hypocritical, they pay taxes to finance a professional association of hitmen collectively called politicians, and then complain about corruption in government. Responsibility, again, most people want to be fired to do things but they are afraid to fail. The fear of failure is manifested in irresponsibility, and especially in delegating those personal responsibilities to others where success is uncertain or carries possible or created liabilities which the person is not prepared to accept. They want authority, but they will not accept responsibility or liability. So they hire politicians to face reality for them. Summary, the people hire politicians so that the people can obtain security without managing it slash obtain action without thinking about it slash inflict theft, injury, and death upon others without having to contemplate either life or death slash avoid responsibility for their own intentions slash obtain the benefits of reality and science without exerting themselves in the discipline of facing or learning either of these things. They give the politicians the power to create and manage a war machine too provide for the survival of the nation, womb, prevent encroachment of anything upon the nation, womb, destroy the enemy who threatens the nation, womb, destroy those citizens of their own country who do not confirm for the sake of stability of the nation, 
womb. Politicians hold many quasi-military jobs, the lowest being the police which are soldiers, the attorneys and the CPAS next to are spies and saboteurs, licensed, and the judges who shout the orders and run the closed union military shop for whatever the market will bear. The generals are industrialists. The presidential level of commander-in-chief is shared by the international bankers. The people know that they have created this farce and financed it with their own taxes, but they would rather knuckle under than be the hypocrite. Thus, a nation becomes divided into two very distinct parts, a docile subnation, great silent majority, and a political subnation. The political subnation remains attached to the docile subnation, tolerates it, and leeches its substance until it grows strong enough to detach itself and then devour its parent. System analysis, in order to make meaningful computerized economic decisions about war, the primary economic flywheel, it is necessary to assign concrete logistical values to each element of the war structure, personnel and material alike. The draft, as military service, few efforts of human behavior modification are more remarkable or more effective than that of the socio-military institution known as the draft primary purpose of the draft or other such institution is to instill, by intimidation, in the young makes of a society the uncritical conviction that the government is omnipotent. W. Cooper note, the truth is just the opposite, as government exists only with the consent of the people, he is soon taught that a prayer is slow to reverse what a bullet can do in an instant. Thus, a man trained in a religious environment for 18 years of his life can, by this instrument of the government, be broken down, be purged of his fantasies and delusions in a matter of mere months. Once the conviction is instilled, all else becomes easy to instill. Even more interesting is the process by which a young man's parents, WHO purportedly love him, can be induced to send him OFF to war to his death. Although the scope of this work will not allow this matter to be expanded in full detail, nevertheless, a cause overview will be possible and can serve to reveal those factors which must be included in some numerical form in a computer analysis of social and war systems. We begin with a tentative definition of the draft. The draft, selective services, etc., is an institution of compulsory collective sacrifice and slavery, devised by the middle-aged and the elderly for the purpose of pressing the young into doing the public dirty work. It further serves to make the young as guilty as the elders, thus making criticism of the elders by the youth less likely, generational stabilizer. It is marketed and sold to the public under the label of patriotic equals national service. Once a candid economic definition of the draft is achieved, the definition is used to outline the boundaries of a structure called a human value system, which in turn is translated into terms of the game theory. The value of such a slave laborer is given in a table of human values, a table broken down into categories by intellect, experience, post-service job demand, etc. Dot, human beings are machines, levers which may be grasped and turned, and there is little real difference between automating a society and automating a shoe factory. These derived it is necessary to use a current table of human values for computer analysis, these values are given in true measure rather than US dollars, since the latter is unstable, being presently inflated beyond the production of national goods and services so as to give the economy a false kinetic energy, paper inductance. The silver value is stable, it being possible to buy the same amount with a gram of silver today as could be bought in 1920. Human value measured in silver units changes slightly due to changes in production technology. Enforcement, Factor 1. As every social system approach, stability is achieved only by understanding and accounting for human nature, action slash reaction patterns. A failure to do so can be, and usually is, disastrous. As in other human social schemes, one form or another of intimidation, or incentive, is essential to the success of the draft. Physical principles of action and reaction must be applied to both internal and external subsystems. To secure the draft, individual brainwashing, 
programming and both the family unit and the peer group must be engaged and brought under control. Factor 2, Father. The man of the household must be housebroken to ensure that Junior will grow up with the right social training and attitudes. The advertising media, etc., are engaged to see to it that father-to-be is pussy-whipped before or by the time he is married. He is taught that he either conforms to the social notch cut out for him or his sex life will be hobbed and his tender companionship will be zero. He is made to see that women demand security more than logical, principled, or honorable behavior. By the time his son must go to war, father will slam a gun into Junior's hand before father will risk the censure of his peers, or to make a hypocrite of himself by crossing the investment he has in his own personal opinion or self-esteem. Junior will go to war or father will be embarrassed. So Junior will go to war, the true purpose notwithstand. Factor 3, Mother. The female element of human society is ruled by emotion first and logic second. In the battle between logic and imagination, imagination always wins, fantasy prevails, material instinct dominates so that the child comes first and the future comes second. A woman with a newborn baby is too starry-eyed to see a wealthy man's cannon fodder or a cheap source of slave labor. A woman must, however, be conditioned to accept the transition to reality when it comes, or sooner. As the transition becomes more difficult to manage, the family unit must be carefully disintegrated and state-controlled public education and state-operated child care centers must become more common and legally enforced so as to begin the detachment of the child from the mother and father at an earlier age. Inoculation of behavioral drugs, Ritalin, can speed the transition for the child, mandatory. Caution. A woman's impulsive anger can override her fear. An irate woman's power must never be underestimated, and her power over a pussy-whipped husband must likewise never be underestimated. It got women the vote in 1920. Factor 4, Junior. The emotional pressure for self-preservation during time of war and self-serving attitude of the common herd that have an option to avoid the battlefield, if Junior can be persuaded to go is all the pressure finally necessary to propel Johnny off to war. Their quiet blackmailings of him are the threats, no sacrifice, no friends, no glory, no girlfriends. Factor 6, Cattle. Those who will not use their brains are no better off than those who have no brains, and so this mindless school of jellyfish, father, mother, son, and daughter, become useful beasts of burden or trainers of the same.